And I invite uh, Rolando Herrero to present uh, efficacy of an HPV 16-18 vaccine against oral HPV infections, a randomized clinical trial. So I'm going to present uh, results on efficacy of the bivalent vaccine against oral HPV infection within the Costa Rica uh, vaccine trial. Uh, the study is funded by the NCI with support of the NIH Office of Research of, on Women's Health, and GSK provided the vaccine and support for aspects of the trial related to regulatory aspects. I have not received funding from pharmaceutical conflict companies and have no conflict of interest. Uh, we know the background, but basically there have been no reports of efficacy of the, any of the vaccines against, H, uh, against oral HPV infections. So within the trial, we assessed vaccine efficacy against prevalent oral HPV infections uh, using the bivalent vaccine. In 2004, 2005, 7,466 women, 18 to 24, were randomized to receive the, the, vac the HPV vaccine or hepatitis A vaccine. The women were followed up blindly for four years with the, with the main purpose of assessing vaccine efficacy of the vaccine against cervical disease. At the four-year visit, we collected an oral cell specimen by use of a 15-second rinse and a 15-second gargle with 15 ml of mouthwash. We conducted on all, these, uh, on all the participants HPV testing with the PCR, with, uh, SPF 10 PCR Deia Lipa 25 able to uh, amplify 57 types and to genotype 25 types, and to increase the sensitivity of detection of 16 and 18, all the specimens that were SPF 10 PCR data positive were tested for HPV 16, 18 with type-specific primers. The, we had a, our pre-specified analysis was an, uh, an intention to treat analysis to evaluate the vaccine efficacy or the reduction in prevalence uh, the evaluation of vaccine efficacy against prevalence, prevalent HPV 16-18 infection four years after vaccination among all women with an oral and a cervical HPV result. The vaccine efficacy was calculated at the, as the complement of the ratios of the prevalence for the HPV and control arms. If multiple types were present, the women was considered positive if a type was pres present and negative otherwise and the analysis were conducted blindly as to vaccine arm by an external group under our direction. So this is the concert diagram. This is a, of tw about 25,000 women were screened, 7,466 were randomized uh, to the HPV or the control group. There were uh, some exclusions along the way uh, during the four years of follow-up women were either pregnant or were undergoing colposcopy or withdrawals. Uh, so we had, a, uh, for the final study visit at 48 months, we had about 3,100 subjects in each arm. And out of that, we also excluded uh, 260 or 200 and some without uh, an oral specimen collection from each arm, and none, none without a, a oral uh, HPV result, and two in this group and two who didn't have a, a cervical HPV result. So the final full analytical cohort was of about 2,900 subjects in each arm. This is the, we, we noticed, uh, well, this is, this is the percent of women who accepted oral collection by different characteristics, and you can see that it is pretty high for all the groups, but there was some difference in the, in the, preval, in the, in the percent of acceptance by sexual behavior uh, the women uh, with, who didn't report any lifetime sexual partners, the virginal women, uh, had a slightly lower acceptance of the, of the collection as well uh, uh, as women who were H. Uh, well, basically, it's driven by the virgins now, but there was a trend uh, with sexual behavior. Uh, and uh, this is the prevalence of oral mucosal HPV types. It is pretty low. The prevalence is 1.7% in this large sample. Uh, carcinogenic types, 
this is in the this is the overall is the red was one percent and 0.9 percent for non-carcinogenic. The most common was, uh, as you can see, in the control group here, because then the, we have to look only at the control group for the type specific. It was 0.4 percent, uh, and then there was HPV 51 and others. The, when we compared the two arms, that this was very important to compare the two arms in terms of different characteristics, we basically see no differences in age, in the total number of clinic visits attended, in the sexual behavior history, in smoking, or in cervical HPV-16 DNA status at enrollment. As you can see here, the, the numbers are very comparable, so the two groups ended up uh, very similar according to the randomization. This is the main results. Uh, this is the vaccine efficacy, estimated vaccine efficacy against oral HPV-16-18 infections. We've, we had one infection in the HPV arm and 15 infections in the control arm, corresponding to a 93% vaccine efficacy with a lower bound of the confidence interval of 62%. When, well, there, then we, we also, of course, run off into small numbers, but uh, if we split by type, it's 92% for HPV-16, and only, I mean, there were no infections in the AP, HPV arm in the, for HPV-18. This, we compared this with cervical efficacy, efficacy against uh, the same type of infections in the cervix for the exact same cohort uh, at the same time point. And interestingly, uh, the vaccine efficacy in the cervix was lower, uh, and this was, uh, there was a 0.04 p uh, for, for interaction uh, between cervical and oral efficacy. So it's a somewhat lower uh, efficacy in the cervix for this cohort. This is a efficacy against other types. Uh, there was basically a little bit of evidence, although non-significant for HPV 31, and then there was nothing significant for the others. Uh, we also looked at six, uh, 6 and 11, just because this is close to the larynx. There was no, no, no efficacy at all. Uh, and then overall, when you look at all oncogenic, it is uh, about 45 percent. So in, uh, in conclusion, this is the first report of vaccine efficacy against oral HPV infection with a 93 percent reduction in prevalence four years after vaccination. Uh, the prevalence was very low, but it, however, it is comparable to previous reports in other studies. Uh, the trial was not specifically designed to evaluate vaccine efficacy against oral HPV infection, and we didn't have a baseline assessment. We didn't know who was positive at, at start. Uh, however, if we had been able to restrict to the HPV negatives uh, at baseline, the, the efficacy would have most likely increased, as it did in the cervix. If we did the, the exercise of restricting the analysis to those who were negative at baseline, the efficacy in the cervix went from 72 percent to 80 percent. Uh, so we don't know the natural history. We don't know the meaning of a single time a oral HPV infection. The fact that the, vaccine, the efficacy was higher in the cervix it may have to do with the later initiation of oral sex than vaginal sex, which we observed in the data. And although the results are not direct evidence that the vaccine will prevent oropharyngeal cancer, uh, they, they point to the possibility of primary prevention of HPV-related oropharyngeal cancers. This is the collaborators uh, from Costa Rica, from uh, DDL laboratories where all the testing was done, and from from NCI, with, this was work mainly done with Amy Crane, collaboration with Amy Crane. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, excellent news on these results. It's, this is also very promising. There is time for a, a small question or comment. Robbie. Hi, Rolando. Great talk. Could you just comment on the risk factors for oral HPV 
in the cohort. I know that wasn't the, uh, the goal of this your presentation, but maybe you could just comment on risk factors that you have found. Yeah, in, the, in, the, in our data set, the risk factors were mainly associated with sexual behavior and smoking, but not with, interestingly, not with oral sex in, the, in this specific uh, uh, data set. And there is a poster. Uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly. The, yeah, we have a poster with all the risk factors for, for oral infections. Rolando, uh, I didn't understand your explanation why the efficacy in the same cohort um, was um, reduced for a cervical infection. What's the well, because this is an ITT analysis, mm -hmm. so we think that there were more women who were already positive at baseline. So, the when you, so they, there were a lot of prevalent infections in the cervix when they got the vaccine. So they, they, many of them were persistent exactly. for years, etc. So you there's a reduced efficacy in the ITT. And so the, the oral efficacy is probably more like an ATP type. So there, we think that maybe there were fewer infections of the oral cavity at baseline. So there were more new infections in the, in the oral cavity. More and more newer infections. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.